Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to the season one, episode two of the Applied Age Growing the Circle debate. My name is Mandy Mock, and I'm the founder and CEO of, of Applied um, AG. Applied AG is the new kid on the block as an international higher education service provider, specialized <coughs> in evaluation, branding, and professional networking solutions. I started Applied AG in January this year after working for QS for 17 years. Thank you very much for joining episode two of the Applied AG Squaring the Circle Debate Web Dinner series, which has a total of six episodes that will take place monthly on the first Wednesday of every month until the end of the year. Today's Squaring the Circle Debate with a motion, online learning will never replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching is hosted by the City University of Hong Kong, and led by the legendary debate master, Dr. Kevin Downing, who is the Secretary of Council and Court and Directory, sorry, Director of the Institutional Research Office. Kevin will be guiding today's debate with four outstanding speakers from different parts of the world, whom he will shortly introduce to all of you. For the series of Squaring the Circle debate, please allow me to thank the City University of Hong Kong for co-hosting and Indonesia's Universitas Erlanga for being the main sponsor. Now, without further ado, allow me to hand over to the very capable and always entertaining Kevin Downing. Over to you, Kevin. Thank you, Mandy, and uh, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, a very warm welcome to all participants uh, in this debate. So far we have 124, um, but we're anticipating uh, up to 500 who have signed up. So welcome to you all. Um, I guess we're all at different time zones. I'm in the UK, it's just gone 2 p.m. I know one or two of my colleagues, Judith, uh, for example, yeah. is also in the UK, um, but the rest of you are in various time, time zones around the world. So. Uh, without further ado, I'll just very briefly run through the format. Um, the format is uh, we're going to debate the motion, a very pertinent motion right now. Online learning will never replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching. That's online learning will never replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching. And we've got a very distinguished panel, which I will briefly uh, introduce to you now before running through the way um, the, de the debate goes. Um, so first of all, let me introduce to you uh, Professor Judith Lamy, who's proposer number one. She's the managing director of JL Education Consultants Limited in the United Kingdom. Uh, welcome, Judith. Thank you. Good, and uh, that, was, that was short and sweet. Um, <laughs> and then on to... <laughs> On to the um, I'm saving it first for my five minutes in a moment. Yeah, I thought you might. <laughs> so now on to the first opposer. In other words, um, face to face um, with Judith is uh, Professor Mansour Ahmed Al Ali, uh, president of Alia University in Bahrain. Welcome, Mansour. Welcome and welcome to you all. Welcome to you all. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's amazing, Moritz. Your second opposer is actually a, the only one applauding you, but that's that's yeah. a, it's a good start. <laughs> that will change. Um, that will change, sir, uh, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And now, um, uh, third in our lineup, proposer number two, backing up uh, Judith, is Professor Dr. Vinesh uh, Thiruchelvam, who's Deputy Vice Chancellor at the Asia Pacific University in Malaysia. So, Dr. Vinesh, very welcome to yeah. you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, good day, everyone, and certainly a bliss to be part of this debate as hosted uh, Applied HE. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And last but not least, um, we have, as the opposer number two, backing up uh, Mansour, we have Professor Moritz van Vrijen, uh, uh, who's the Rector of the University of Applied Sciences, Europe, UE, in Germany. So, Moritz, welcome. Thank you very much uh, for your kind introduction, uh, Kevin. Me, and, yeah, exactly. And, and may the opponents uh, stick to the rules of the uh, debate. <laughs> yeah, this is already I don't remember getting agreeing rather to partisan, isn't it? Okay. What is the <laughs> okay. 
Okay, now, the way this goes is, first of all, to all participants, the attendees, of which there's now uh, somewhere around 140 of you, I will uh, give you an opportunity to vote on the motion before the debate starts. You will then see the results of that vote, and we will then start the debate. The first to speak will be Judith. Uh, she will speak in support of the motion. She has five minutes with no uh, visual aids. At the end of four minutes and 30 seconds, I have this wonderful bell here at home, and I will just go. At the end of five minutes, I will ring it continuously until you're all sick and tired of it, and then the speaker will no doubt be quiet. Okay, so that's the way it goes. Uh, and then at the end, um, once you've all had an opportunity to raise your hand, and I'll try and give as many of you as possible, if not all of you who want to speak, an opportunity to speak. After the four um, protagonists, that's Judith first, followed by Vinesh, uh, sorry, followed by Mansour, followed by Vinesh, followed by Moritz, uh, that's the order in which you will speak. Once they've finished, I'll throw it open to all of our participants. Uh, if you use the raise hand icon, I will try and get to you in turn as to who raises the hand first. You then have, you make your point, you say who you are, you say where you're, where you're from. So Kevin Downing, City University of Hong Kong. Uh, and then you say, I'm speaking in support or I'm speaking against, and you don't ask a question, you make a point within 10 sentences. So you have 10 sentences to make your point. Sentences, the dreaded bell comes back to remind you that um, you need to go back and do maths 101. Okay, so uh, ten, you get 10 sentences. Then right at the end, um, we will take another vote and we'll see if academics around the world are as open-minded and flexible and listen to debate in the way they like to think they do or whether you're all very close-minded and uh, once you've made your mind up that's the end of it. So I hope we'll have some fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. So um, without further ado I'm now going to open the opening poll. Remember you're voting on Online learning will never replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching. And I'm launching the polling uh, now. I'm not going to, or I will allow the panelists to vote. That'll be fun. So we'll launch the polling now. Okay, you now have one minute to agree with the motion that online learning will never replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching or disagree with that motion. At the moment, I can tell you that agree is well ahead. It's amazing. As soon as I say that, the disagree jumps a little bit as well. <laughs> okay. So very interesting. You have half a minute left, 30 seconds. Well done. So far, most of you are voting. Some of you are not. Come on, guys, it's easy to vote. This is when somebody says, oh, can I change my vote, please? Yes, at the end. <laughs> okay, you have 10 seconds. Five, three, two, one. Okay, I'm ending the polling. I'm now going to share the results with you. Oh. Oh. Okay, so... 85% of our part, of our participants, 92, um, actually agree with the motion and 15% disagree. So that means that Mansour and Moritz have a mountain to climb. And I can't think of any two people more capable of climbing that mountain uh, uh, when they uh, do their five minute presentation. So I'm gonna stop sharing the results now until the end and close this down and I'm going to without further ado move directly to Professor Judith Lamy and Judith your five minutes in proposition begin now. Okay 
Right, in this five minutes, I'm going to give you five reasons why online learning will never replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching. And I'm going to be counting down, five, four, three, two, one. You only uh, have to agree with one of these to agree with the proposal. So let's go. Online learning is very flexible model of learning and teaching. You can do it where you like, on the couch, in the library. You can do it when you like. You can be a full-time work or a full-time student. You can do it at your own pace and you can do it in your own place. As long as, of course, you have the technology. Reason number five, a simple one. Online learning will never replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching is we don't all have the technology. Many universities, schools and colleges have responded impressively quickly to the challenges of COVID-19, to the various lockdowns, to remote teaching and learning. Most have moved provision online. This has been speedy and taken a huge amount of time and effort. But at what cost is the quality of the provision the same? There are many ways in which we measure the quality of our face-to-face -face learning and teaching, ways that have been agreed and, and approved, transparent ways, ways that have been published, that we're all aware of, that mean the same from one school to another, from one region to another. This isn't the case for online learning. So reason number four, that online learning will never replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching, we don't yet have the agreed quality measures. Next one. One of the main differences between online and face-to-face -face is that face-to-face -face involves students and tutors interacting in real time in a familiar and shared learning environment. Questions are dealt with there and then and debate is instant. This gives the tutor the opportunity to change direction and to pick up on the mood of the room and to change what they were probably going to be delivering. So reason number three, that online learning will never replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching is that we want and need real-time interaction in a shared learning environment with our tutors and our fellow peers. Face-to-face -face learning and teaching is about so much more than what takes place in a 50-minute slot on a Wednesday afternoon. One of my students, a highly motivated and gifted master's student from Nigeria, said during lockdown that what she missed was most was the contact, the physical communication, day-to-day -day interaction. Those moments outside of the seminar room or the lecture theatre, the impromptu discussions that would take place. These discussions would spark creativity, would feed into the learning and help shape the learning that was taking place. So reason number two, that online learning will never replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching. We need the space and the opportunity to innovate and create with others. And we can't do that in a scheduled Zoom slot or a Microsoft Teams session. But the main reason, reason number one, that online learning will never replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching is that in reality, of course, it does not have to. It does not need to be an either or situation. What suits one person does not suit another. We all learn differently. So online may be the preferred medium for some, but it will never be for all. Online learning will never replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching, but it will probably as long as we have the technology, always have a place. There is room for both. Both can learn from each other and there is a place for both in our learning and teaching. So don't waste your vote. Agree with the proposal. You know it makes sense. Online learning will never ever replace face-to-face -face learning and teaching. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judith. Thank you, Judith. Um, a very passionate and well thought through uh, opening uh, proposition. I'm now going to go to Professor Mansour Ahmed Al Ali, uh, who's going to present uh, the opposition from his perspective. Prof Mansour, five minutes speak. Thank you, thank you. Uh, will online teaching ever replace face-to-face -face teaching? Yes, of course. If we try to put obstacles to online teaching and learning, and hold on to centuries old methods of face-to-face, -face, 
then we will be damned by history. By history. Just imagine if the owners of, and users of the horse and cart in the 19th century refused the automobile. Imagine if people stopped computers and computer systems. Will we have GPS today, driverless cars, fintech, mobile phones, social media, and all aspects of other important technologies in medicine, aviation, communication, etc. Education has been the slowest changing field. The same old thing, a student comes to the classroom, listens to the lecturer, maybe use some sports facilities and go home. The question is, what did the student do in the classroom except listen to a talk in the classroom? What does face-to-face -face actually mean? Why do we ask a student to travel daily to campus to listen to and watch a lecturer whom he or she can watch online? What would we lose if the student did not come physically to the classroom, but virtually watched and was part of the very same classroom in its entirety? Nowadays, we have many tools to support online teaching. Microsoft Teams, Zoom, WebEx, etc., and the list is growing. We are witnessing a revolution in communication technology where 5G is moving on to 6G and 7G. And very soon, the speed of the internet will provide real life-like experience for all, including the teaching environment. COVID-19 demonstrated that to us, we were able to simulate a real classroom environment with the current technology, imagine the future technology. The current techno technology for online teaching as we know it today, we all know it will progress fast and will make the university campus a thing of the past. We have to accept change. I think it's a waste of time trying to object to something that will happen anyway. The current online teaching tools will form a fast growing industry worth hundreds of billions of dollars. According to Forbes, the worldwide e-learning market is projected to be worth $325 billion in 2025. According to Globe Newswire, mobile learning will grow by to $78 billion by 2025. MOOC market, as we know them, will, will be worth $25 billion by 2025. AI will impact the GDP of many countries, the US by 35%, the UK by 25%, for example. According to the World Economic Forum, the biggest drivers for change are the changing nature of work and mobile, internet, cloud technology, internet of things and AI. Let's be part of it now. The concept of the virtual classroom, virtual professor, smart book, supported by AI concept will develop fast. Subjects such as history and languages will be fully taught online with ease and comfort. The outlook for use of intelligent online tools will set the platform for the less fortunate to attend higher education simply because it will be cheaper. Universities will benefit from employing industry experts and internationally located professors to teach online subjects. International student mobility will be the norm. I would call it virtual mobility. There will be a profound and lasting technological revolution in higher education. Teaching staff will become less reluctant regarding opportunities offered by online education. Those who object to online teaching will decline. Unless we quickly move to online teaching technologies, there'll be implications for higher education. Those who will not move with the with the, with the mode of things, they will have problems. There'll be problems between learners, institutions, and countries. The problem will be, they'll be split. Some will stay behind, some will move fast. Some will argue against virtual teaching, but time will prove them wrong, I can assure you. I am in IT and I know, I have seen the change. I'm not ent entirely decrying fully face-to-face -face teaching. I am arguing that it will slowly diminish and slowly the decision makers will realize that there is a lot of money to be saved. Some will argue about assessments for online teaching. This can be done online and can be done face to face. If the long term blended learning will, if it will be the ruler of the day in the next few years, but even that portion of face to face 
will shrink. I'm nearly finished. I would say in Okay, I'm sorry, I've muted Mansoor because his five minutes are up. The nearly finished is not nearly good enough. Uh, I've got to be fair to everyone. So I'm sorry, Mansoor. Um, I think you, you made some strong points there. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to hand over now to uh, the second proposer, uh, Professor Vinesh Thiruchelvan. Uh, so Vinesh, your five minutes uh, begin. All right, uh, I'm fully on board with what Judith had uh, mentioned earlier. Yeah, uh, let me take a deeper dive into some of the aspects which she shared as well. Yeah, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has provided a reality check on some of the mood swings and practicality of online learning. So let me take a swipe uh, from a technology perspective. Uh, we have seen inequality drive different uses of technology with wealthier institutions using uh, more demanding technologies such as virtual and mixed real reality presence, while others turn to tools with lower infrastructure demands, asynchronous video, audio, images, and text. Uh, the victims here are the students based on ununiform learning methods across various institutions. As there is no minimum uh, regulations or standards in place in reality uh, for online learning. Now, Mansoor mentioned about online learning and technology being cheaper. That is not right, I, I believe. Yeah? Technology has a price. And every year you see heavy investments from all institutions on technology and infrastructure. On the part of 5G, 6G, 6G and 7G, I do believe it's like hotel meetings. Yeah? Uh, there is no such thing as a six or a seven star hotel. They all have the similar facility and functionality as a five star hotel, perhaps. Maybe the building has a different thing. Yeah? So from the context of delivery experts, I think it has been a, a bit strenuous and inexpedient uh, for academicians who are, who are not really used to, the, to living online, finding a way to be connected with students while also maintaining a work-life uh, balance. That has been an issue. Uh, we have seen that very clearly. Now, taking an angle from a learner's perspective, um, in my opinion, a major challenge with respect to online learning uh, being faced right now is digital literacy. So academicians cannot see or gauge student online performance based on what is basically happening, happening very often is distractions to the learner. Mind you, speaking from experience myself, yeah, uh, I see students messaging, surfing the internet, playing online games, and to be frank, sleeping uh, while being online. And these are very common traits. Yeah? Hence, the impact of learning is ambivalent. Education is not limited to the syllabus uh, which is provided. Yeah, it is also discipline, manners, morals, and interaction with other students and lecturers uh, or academicians, uh, which are difficult to infuse through online learning. Moreover, access to online platforms, recordings, and videos, it basically diminishes the ability to remember and retain information. So you're very dependent on technology, and that is not the conventional way. That is the modern way, but it does not help. I think equitable access to students uh, will entail uh, more flexibility than we can anticipate. You know, from, from things like attendance to deadlines to modalities of communication, classroom teaches life skills, full stop. Daily interactions with academicians and peers improve skills to deal with and to educate uh, students how to live in a current society. Even in a modern and futuristic society, we have to interact. Now, my final area uh, is the area of uh, the final stakeholder, which are the parents. Yeah. Now, COVID-19, if I, if I may use COVID-19 as an example, has illuminated the depth of the digital gulf between well-off families, where every student has a study uh, bedroom heated with high expensive uh, spec hardware, yeah? compared to medium income students in an overcrowded uh, home uh, with shared bedrooms and exiguous internet connectivity. Now, at least in the classroom, every student has an equal uh, learning access. Yeah? Uh, we also know that in the case of pedagogical effectiveness of online learning, it has yet to make its mark, uh, particularly for students who are struggling at school. Now, how can we forget about students who are weak yeah, 
students who struggle at school, how can they be assisted if they are remote? Yes, you can communicate with them, but if technology becomes a failure or internet connectivity becomes a failure, then these students will lag behind. So when the dust settles on this pandemic, what I personally believe is there'll be a large number of disadvantaged students who will, who will have fallen behind their peers and online learning uh, may be exhibiting uh, the problem in actual reality. So Mansur did mention the disparity uh, among educators. Yeah? I think uh, uh, my, my take on it is that as educators, our very honorable role is to provide education as a wholesome to every single student. It doesn't matter where they come from or what their backgrounds are. So we cannot afford for this disparity between the learned and the people who are not able to catch up. Because if, we, if, if a society is supposed to converge together, and then that's the way we have to... I'm sorry, I have to mute. Uh, I'm going to be very strict for everyone then, uh, and I'm timing it to the second. Thank you very much, very eloquent, uh, with plenty of uh, good examples and, and uh, new arguments to support um, Judith's presentation. Uh, and now, without further ado, I'm going to move on to last but not least, uh, Professor Moritz. Thank you very much, uh, Kevin. So um, you, you broke up at the end. So uh, I assume that was my name uh, you just introduced, right? OK, thank you. I'll, I'll kick off then. The five minutes starts now. OK, thank you. OK, so just for clarity, um, this is not a gathering of lawyers. Uh, we are not here to have a lengthy discussion about definitions. This is a, a gathering of smart people. And, and let me start off by saying, actually, I agree with something Judith said. And that is, it's pretty old fashioned to talk about education in purely a binary divide. And I recently wrote an article about this where I said, stop talking about online and classroom as if this is the kind of the two big enemies, the thesis and the antithesis. That's not what this is about. This is about the fact that the classic classroom is marginalizing and will fade away and will disappear. It's a reality. Now, of course, the lawyer would say, oh, well, no, not really, because there will always be a classroom somewhere. And that is true. It's a bit like we can never debate whether the blackboard and chalk has uh, disappeared or not. There's always somewhere a blackboard and chalk left, so therefore it has not faded away yet. Things take time in higher education. I know that. But the truth is that students are need to be prepared for the digital world. Yes, they need life skill, but life skills are also digital skills. We cannot teach them completely in isolation as if they're in a little island away from the world, which is totally dependent on digital tools. We need to prepare them for that. And we should, as teachers, not be afraid of that, but to embrace them. And so, yes, the classic classroom will disappear the same way the classic teacher will disappear. That's not actually the question. I think the, I'm surprised 85% actually voted in favor of this, other than saying we prefer to teach uh, in a classroom rather than online. But actually the inevitable truth is that over time, with a lot of conditions in place, and my opponents are absolutely right about that, of course, uh, the classic classroom will disappear because it will be replaced by all kind of much more sophisticated teaching tools. The question is really when, and yes, that can take a little bit of time in higher education. Uh, I fully appreciate that some of my colleagues haven't even realized yet the printing press is invented. They still stand in front of the classroom, read their notes, and expect the students to take careful notes of what they are reading, not realizing there's absolutely no need to do this. And they are the ones who say, I do not want an iPhone in the classroom. I do not want an iPad in the classroom. You have to be focused on me because I'm the source of all your knowledge and wisdom. Not really, guys. Go on. It's it's. The world has moved on. A teacher has a clear role to play in bringing that knowledge about. But the idea that you can only do that in a classroom which is almost against the digital world is not uh, sustainable. The, stu the students deserve better than that. I fully appreciate it will take a long time, years, maybe even centuries before the last teaching dinosaur has disappeared. But they will disappear. It's inevitable, like with the real dinosaurs, that kind of teaching will unfortunately 
or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, uh, become history. And that is good news for the students because the students really need to be prepared for being successful in the digital world. And as a university, we should not fight the digital world. We have to embrace it and we should not be afraid of it. And we should make sure that students actually see and recognize it, that the classroom is also moving along with time. The classic classroom is history, but there is a bright future for teaching. And that is that, uh, like with the introduction of the printing press, the lecturer reinvented himself. And that's the same way uh, teaching will work all the time. We will reinvent ourselves and take advantage of the fact that we don't need to explain certain things. We can do it better online, whilst at the same time, actually, you know, making sure that we have a bigger impact on students' life using the digital tools. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't give a bell, uh, Kevin. To time, um, so that no, that's very good. I, I had it here poised. I trust me, it was uh, very definitely poised to go. Okay. Sorry, my home phone is ringing. I'm just cancelling ah, it. <laughs> right, <laughs> the wrong okay, bell, guys. That's one of the disadvantages of online learning. Um, so, thank you very much. Uh, I think that was very interesting debate whoever this is, is very persistent. Not much you can do about that, except mute it. Um, so um, what I would like to do now is throw it open to the uh, 168 participants from elsewhere uh, in the world. I'm just trying to mute this thing. Um, yeah, so I'm now going to um, uh, throw this open to the other participants from uh, around the world. Uh, and what you have to do is raise your hand, say who you are when I, I allow you to speak, um, say whether you're arguing for or against the motion, and uh, you have 10 sentences then to make your point. So start raising hands now. I'm watching my screen on the right hand side. Um, so far, no hands raised that I can see. So, ah, right, I have someone, um, Nida. I'm gonna allow you to talk now. Please introduce yourself, say where you're from and make your point. Okay, thank you. Nida, I'm just unmuting um, you. Good evening, yes. You uh, good evening, uh, panelists. Good evening for introducer. Um, really, it's a very interesting uh, topic nowadays, especially in this uh, critical time. I am Dr. Nida uh, Muhammad Ali Wadi from uh, Oman National University of Science and Technology College of Pharmacy. I am a senior lecturer in uh, College of Pharmacy. I am also teaching online uh, to my students. And um, I am really uh, struggling with the teaching of uh, online, not because um, of the uh, type of le learning or a new technology, but as Dr. Bench uh, said, we have a different uh, student from student has a good net uh, for uh, connections with the student have uh, poor net for the connections. And we face that some students, they didn't get the lectures. Uh, this is one. Second important thing, we should not uh, ignore the communication skills. Teaching, it is not only uh, delivering the information. Teaching is a matter of interaction between the teachers and, between, uh, and the students. The students, and we are, we are a student, and we have a uh, teachers, and we, observe our teacher, how the information get uh, inside us. So this is, is the weakness of the online. Online teaching can be complementary. Can be complementary, yes. Thank you, but Dr. Nida. Yes. No. Dr. Thank Nida, uh, I'm gonna... Yeah, thank you, Dr. Nida. Um, I can tell you're not a mathematician because it was somewhat more than 10 sentences, but having said <laughs> that, um, points very well made. Um, thank, thank you very much. I'm now going to move on to uh, Abdul Hafiz um, Qureshi. Uh, and Abdul, I've just uh, allowed you to uh, talk. Can you, can you talk, please? Hello. Yes. 
I am Dr. Abdul Lafiz from National University of Science and Technology, Oman. So my question is that can we ask this question to our students also and see how they respond? So they are the, I think um, it's their opinion is necessary. Uh, this is my suggestion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very brief but very clear um, comment. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdul. Uh, I'm now going to someone that I, I'm going to let everyone know this person is, is going to support Mansour, whatever else is said. It's uh, his colleague in, in uh, Bahrain, uh, Professor uh, Abdullah al Hawaj. Uh, welcome back. And uh, please make your, your, comments, uh, your, your comments now. I'm just asking you to unmute. Dr. Abdullah, are uh, you with us? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can now. You are muted. Yep. Okay. Okay. First of all, I would like to thank you for this very important topic. But I'm always surprised about people stopping technology and about people hating changes, you know. You know, you, we cannot reach where we reached without accepting changes and difficulties. We've been really having the face-to-face -face teaching for the last two or three hundred years. It's time to change that. I think really invention is important and people have to accept changes. They're not going to stay for, for, for a full time, you know. So I think, yes, uh, online teaching going to be the future and will replace face-to-face -face teaching. Thank you very much. Abdullah Al-Hawaj, Ahliya University. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Abdullah. Um, that, was, that was very succinct and to the point. Um, thank you for that. Uh, the next person on my list, I've got so many hands up here. Don't forget to say who you are, where you're from, and whether you're in support or against the motion uh, before you outline your 10 sentences. So next speaker is going to be Kavitha Palanyapan, and uh, I'm just about to allow you to talk. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you. Kavitha, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. I'm Kavitha from University of Newcastle, Singapore. And I would like to take the side of the opposers in this case. Why is, okay, there are, in a class setting, if you see, there are many students who are basically sitting in a class where they're not interested. Even if it's a face-to-face -face classroom, they're sitting there and listening to the class because they are forced to. They, are, they have to take certain courses. But in an online environment, they can be free to take whatever the courses they are learning. So if learning is the only ultimatum, if learning is the main criteria, then online is going to be more favorable for that. And another point is that many of them said that there is not going to be any interaction. Well, there will be different platforms for interaction. It need not be a classroom setting. That's it from me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kavitha. Um, very strong points and very well made. Uh, I'm now going to move on to the next speaker so we can get as many people as possible to, to make their input. Um, so VG Sridhar, if you can um, make yourself ready, I'm just allowing you to talk now. Hi VG, very nice photograph of you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kevin. I'm Dr. VG Sridhar, uh, uh, Professor, VIT, one of the uh, uh, top uh, 15 university in India. It's a private university. I've been working in uh, VIT uh, since 1997. So my uh, observation is future is going to be blended learning. Learning anytime, anywhere is going to be the new normal. We cannot force any student to come to the campus or uh, you know, uh, attend the classes in online. Either uh, it is online teaching or classroom teaching, students should be willing to attend the classes no, but the faculty should attract the student, whether it is going to be online learning or uh, you no know, classroom learning. That should not be any, uh, uh, we should not force students to uh, uh, maintain attendance or force them to come. So students should be attracted. Now even the students are uh, uh, in a situation, even the video sessions are uh, getting bored for them. If you send some video uh, thing, they are fast forwarding it and uh, they are uh, no, going on and multitasking has become the norm. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank nice you. Of, uh, attending this session. Thank you, Prof. G. Um, I, I just to let everyone know, I have three hello going to uh, me, um, Prof. Hamamalini. I'm now allowing you to talk. Please go ahead. Uh, Prof. Mamalini, can you unmute, please? We can't hear you. Can you unmute, please? You need to unmute your microphone. Uh, I'm yes. Dr. Hema Malini. Uh, I'm working uh, as a professor in uh, BIT University, Chennai. I just wanted to say something about uh, the online classes. One thing is... Uh, probably it will not work for, uh, fine for all the courses. For professional courses where you need hands-on practical sessions to be is mandatory for them. So in that case, you cannot uh, completely depend on online courses. So the, just I uh, wanted to register that uh, point here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Hamamalini. Um, I'm now going to go to uh, I'll go to Taki Al Abdwani, then to Gagan Kukreja. Uh, Fatima Zeb and Asima Kalim. Those are the names that we have up at the moment. So next up is Prof uh, Taki Abdwani, uh, and I'm going to allow you to talk now, Prof. Hi, Prof Taki. You need to unmute, please. That's yes. good. Yeah. Go Thank ahead. you very much. Thank you very much. I think you know, looking to the higher education. Yes, I agree. We should be, you know, ready for the change. But we need to remember one thing: a lot of people goes to the universities and colleges to get jobs, and getting the skills cannot be online. It's just, uh, you know, uh, giving those sort of skills. I think blended learning will be uh, the future. Uh, the contact hours might get reduced, but I don't think that uh, you know, um, online will be able to replace uh, what happens in the classroom. Uh, a lot of universities and colleges, they're changing their responsibility, their behaviors. They go into what we call it uh, real working environments. And I think there's big demand from the industry. When we get evaluated, when external bodies come and see and tell us whether we want to be on leading tables, the, one of the criteria is the job uh, finding, uh, graduate finding jobs. And I think that will, uh, the responsibilities of the higher education will change. And I think higher education response will, uh, institutions will take more responsibility on giving skills rather than the knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Taki, uh, for those comments. Very helpful. Uh, I'm now going to move on. You'll notice I'm trying to get as many people in as possible. Uh, to I hope I get your, your first name right, Gagan Kukreja. Um, I'm now allowing you to talk, Gagan. Make sure. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, this is a very interesting uh, discussion. My, uh, my name is Dr. Gagan. I work with Helia University. And I have uh, this kind of observation that this blended learning will be the future. And gradually we will um, adopt more technology in future. So especially in higher education, maybe in school education, in primary education, uh, the, the adoption in the adoption of technology may not be that much fast, but in higher education, in professional qualification, in, in training, it will play a very, very significant role. And one more point I want to mention here, which is missed here in this discussion. There are many MOOC courses available now. There are many good platforms like Coursera. We have edX, we have Udemy, we have some other platforms, even Salma, uh, Khan Academy. Some courses are very, very affordable and they are very highly quality course. So this uh, gives an opportunity to the, the people who have less affordability. They can also learn now with the help of this technology. So I believe that we are moving in this uh, blended learning area actually. We have no other choice. We have to adopt it. 
I'm just going to take chair's privilege at the moment and just mention an article that so a, a study I did some years ago now about uh, online uh, classroom extroverts uh, and classroom introverts. The classroom introverts turned into online extroverts. In other words, they were much more prepared to engage in debate, put their hand up and so on when online. Uh, was in the classroom and they were much more reticent. By the time they'd done the, the mental processing, the, the lesson was over. And so we used the Blackboard blended learning system to get them on board. If you want to read that, it's about 2003. It's uh, education. a little, little plug for educational studies there. Okay, I'm going to move now to uh, Asima Kalim. Uh, Asima, I'm allowing you to talk. Can you please uh, un if you could, um, uh, thank you. Go ahead. Hi all, Asima. I'm glad to, hi all. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm glad that you have given such a platform for discussing a very uh, wanted to topic nowadays. Uh, well, I'm from National University of Science and Technology. I'm a senior lecturer over there in the Department of Civil Engineering. Well, my experience uh, in online teachings uh, is belongs to those 85% uh, category, which uh, in the beginning, the poll of which you have taken. <laughs> so, well, uh, for me, um, online teaching is not that uh, useful thing for the students uh, because for technical students, they have to uh, have a face-to-face -face learning because of interactive nature of learning, particularly for engineering students. For example, in my experience in teaching in classroom uh, has made the students ask me doubts immediately whenever they had, while on online teaching, they have to keep the doubts to themselves until the task is done and they have to approach it. By then, the uh, uh, question the taste of the doubt would have lost <laughs> so okay. uh, well i would not really agree on this but the future would certainly be blended learning well nowadays we are not prepared for having a full online uh, teaching and learning pro procedure that's all i have to say thank you Thanks, Eva. very good points thank you very much um, there seems to be a theme ar um, arriving here in relation to blended learning. Uh, I have two more hands up. I'm just going to take those two. That's Rin and Pfizer. And then we're going to give one minute to each of the panelists to summarize their arguments, this time in reverse order. So I'll begin with Moritz and I'll end with Judith because she made me promise she would have the last word. Um, so uh, let me just go to <laughs> let me go to Rin in the first place. Um, uh, Rin, I, I'm I allowing knew it you break, to... uh, Kevin. I knew it was <laughs> Rick. <laughs> All right. Well, hello, everybody. My name is actually Abu Bakr. I'm also from Asia Pacific University, and uh, the Hi. debate has been quite interesting. But most of the complaints that are being raised for the online are actually because it's still in its infancy. For example, I could argue that during the time when the classical school approach that we're using now was developed, people were complaining about transportation. So this is the same argument, I believe, as the bandwidth and all the other things. And another thing that I noticed is there's another comment on interaction, as if to assume interaction only happens in a classroom environment. I have a three-year-old son and I haven't been for the life of me being able to teach him anything. <laughs> but when I take him to the playground and he's with his other mates, he seems to even learn faster and seems to be more interested. So I agree with uh, uh, what uh, the Professor Mortis says when he says that the future is online. And I do believe that, but it also unifies with what Judith was saying earlier that there need to be either or. It's not a binary division, it's an evolution. And as these technologies evolve, I think the definition and then it will make the debate redundant. If you, if you- Thank you. Okay, that's great. I, I, I'm gonna move on. I want people to make their points quickly. I think I have time for one more and that's Faisal. Uh, Faisal, I'm allowing you to talk now. You need to uh, unmute. Faisal, can you unmute? Yes, yes, okay. Thank, thank you, thank you for this opportunity. 
and I must thank the organization or to organi organizing this webinar. I agree with Professor Mansour that learning should be online, but there are some uh, consequences or some concerns to be taken regarding some practical courses like mathematics, engineering, IT. Uh, blending learning, I think, would be the nice place or the nice word to use for this technology. We have to, to use the technology. We need to benefit from technology. Thank you very much. Thank you, Faisal. And someone that's had her hand up and down throughout, I'm going to give the last word to, and that is Fatima Zeb. Fatima, I'm allowing you to talk. Can you unmute? Fatima, can you unmute? Sure. Hello, everyone. Hi. Am I clear? Go All ahead. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm a teacher in Oman College of Management Technology, Oman. I would like to speak in support of this topic. The one challenge is the biggest challenges that we face these days while going into online teaching is uh, assessments which is, forms the core of learning and teaching. So while assessing, it's very important that we, we maintain quality. Thus, okay. I must say that assessments are the biggest challenge that we face. And yeah. what we do is we land up giving a lot of benefit of doubt to our students, and we are not able to maintain quality. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Fatima. Uh, as I said, that, that's as many people as I can get in from the participants. So I'm now going to give one minute in reverse order, and I will strictly adhere to one minute, then I'll mute you, uh, beginning with Prof. Moritz speaking against the proposal. Uh, this is bef the, your last chance to speak before um, the vote. Okay, Prof. Moritz, Van Rooyen. Okay, so... Look, it's true, online education is in infancy. It's young, it's only something like 10, 15 years uh, old. Uh, tech challenges are there, it's all true, but that's not what this debate is about. This is not about whether online or classical is better or whether you're already right for online. This is about the future of education. And the future of education is that we want to boost the quality of our learning, to boost the quality of interaction by using digital tools, and that is inevitable. And it's in the interest of our students and it's not in the interest of our students to fight that. We should embrace it. Now, then we can have the question, is it complementary or not? Well, what is complementary? There will be need for real life interaction, absolutely. But it is actually going to be supplementary to the online teaching tools because that's much more individualized. It's much more effective. Sitting in a classroom, listening to the professor for hours on end, I've been there and I thought it was extremely boring. <laughs> right? We need to move on and get to a more sophisticated style of teaching. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Prof. Moritz. Uh, I am now going to move on to um, Prof. Uh, Vinesh. Uh, Prof. Vinesh, you have one minute beginning now. All right. Uh, the pivot to online learning in totality is basically a response to an unprecedented uh, emergency at best. So digital pedagogy is an emerging field and will also be an embellishment to face-to-face -to -face learning. Challenges remain for academicians to find a platform uh, that can be in effectively encourage or develop a sense of community online among students. As such, impediments of specific LMS can only slow down interaction and, prove and provide limits uh, to an overall functionality of uh, teaching and learning. Now, having said that, teaching with technology is not a one-size-fits-all one uh, approach. It depends on the type of technology and the curriculum to be delivered. So here, once again, I strongly propose that online cannot and will never ever replace face-to-face -face learning. Thank you, Vinesh. That's uh, very good of you. Kept it well within time. And now, last but not, uh, sorry, penultimate speaker speaking against the motion, Prof. Mansour Ahmed Al Ali. Uh, Mansour, one minute. Thank you. I Hello, think... Mansour. Hello. Can you hear me? I, yes, I can. Some, somebody's trying to deceive the audience. I think the motion said online teaching will never replace. We did not say it will not replace in 10 years. Our argument is that we should invest in technology, 
curriculum will be the same, everything will be the same, assessments will be the same. They may come to the university and, and get assessed, but it is time there is a lot of benefit, financial benefits, social benefits, safety benefits. It is time we realize the professor is the professor, the curriculum is the curriculum, but we are saving effort and money and technology will move. Believe me, the fastest growing thing in the world is IT. A Thank lot of you. billions are invested and we will go nowhere from it. We may, it may take a year, two or three. Yes, now there are technical difficulties. Yes, some people cannot afford the laptop now, but we said we will never. And my argument is it will one Thank day. You, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I promised I'd give you the last word, Judith. Um, the, you owe me at least a cappuccino. Um, Fair enough. Next. It's We're in the post. To... Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> so uh, um, uh, you have one minute, Judith, to sum up the arguments for the um, proposal from that. Okay. Right. We, we need the space and the opportunity to innovate and create with others. And we can't do that over Zoom and over Teams. What have we missed in the last few months? Have we missed using the computer? Have we missed technology? No, we're using it all the time. It's been terrific. We've embraced it. We've made lots of mistakes with it. Some people have been boring with it as well. That doesn't preclude them being boring just because they're not face to face. However, what we've really missed is that physical contact, that interaction, where we spark that creativity. So we do need to embrace online technology, of course we do. And that needs to be part of our learning. We need to prepare our students for a digital world, but a digital world full of human beings. Face-to-face -face will never be replaced by online learning and teaching. It'll be a part of it and it'll always be there because we'll always be there. Thank you, Judith. Uh, now guys, it's back to everyone, all the participants. We've managed to hang on to all of you so far. <coughs> Excuse me, I assure you that's nothing nasty. Uh, it's just the dry air in here. I'm going to go to uh, an online poll now and we'll see if you've changed your mind. We'll see how open-minded you are as academics or we'll see if, as I suspect, we're actually not quite as open-minded as we like to think we are. So I'm going to the, the poll now. Uh, we're going to relaunch the polling. If you remember, 85% agreed with the motion at the beginning. 15% disagreed. You now have um, one minute to change your mind or remain the same. Here we go. You should have it in front of you. Yes, I can see the votes are piling in now. Oh, wow, disagrees a little bit more. More than last time anyway. Well then, keep going. While you're voting, I'll just apologize that I'll have to go and I won't be able to stay for the coffee because the persistent caller was my president from Hong Kong and I cut him off about three times. So if I want to keep my job, I think I better call him back immediately after this. <laughs> I did check to see whether he was a participant or not, but he wasn't. <laughs> okay, you have 10 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. I'm ending the polling. Actually, there has been a reasonably victory, I have to say, to the opposers, because I will now share it with you. 71% um, now agree, and 29% disagree so although everyone's a winner today the proposers they wait uh, the opposers claim that they managed to change the minds of more of the participants so uh, without further ado I would just like to thank everyone for taking part I really enjoy these debates and I'm I'm one of those dinosaurs Moritz was talking about for which I'm certainly not a digital native um, in fact, I'm not even sure I can spell digital native, um, but here we are. Uh, it's been great to, to have this debate across the world. I'm going to ask you to hang on because Mandy is going to speak to you now. You will forgive me. I do want to keep my job, so I will uh, be calling 
my persistent caller, uh, immediately uh, I say good, goodbye to you. Now, before I do that, I actually have to hand this back um, to uh, my colleague. How do I do that, um, Peter? I've forgotten. Um, you click on my name or on the flight HC, uh, more, okay. and then uh, they post again. Uh, yeah, that's good, but I can't see applied. Oh, yes, I can. Got it. And I click on more, and then I make you the host. So everyone, please stay safe. I really look forward to the opportunity to re-meet some of you in person and to meet new people in person when we're able to have a face-to-face -face, uh, conference. Thank you. I've learned a lot from this, and I hope you have. Um, I'll say bye for now, but keep your eyes open for the next debate. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you so much. Now, just a housekeeping announcement. While Mandy does her closing comments, uh, I will try and upgrade all of you to panelists with video. So we're just going to see how it works. Yeah. Maybe we crash all of Zoom uh, by doing that. But uh, if you can join by video, please do. We'd love to see you and uh, cheer to you and say hello um, and have a little bit of social program after this. Uh, Mandy, go right ahead. OK. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see it. OK. Well, thank you everyone for the very lively and insightful debate. I have learned a lot and I hope that the same is true for you. I'd like to express my deep appreciation to our wonderful speakers for their time and contribution. And also thank you, our great participants for joining us for this episode two of Squaring the Circle Debate once again in such large numbers. I'd like to thank our hosting partner, City University of Hong Kong and our sponsor, Universitas Air Langer of Indonesia for their valuable support. Well, this marks the end of episode two of the Squaring the Circle debate with many more events planned. As mentioned, um, Squaring the Circle debate is always on the first Wednesday of every month till the end of the year. And the next one, episode three, is on the 2nd of September with the motion, Higher Education Collaboration Can Heal Geopolitical Divides. Do note the dates down in your diary, 2nd of September. On the 19th of August at 9 p.m. Singapore time, we will be hosting session three of the Fireside Chat series. The topic of session three is inclusiveness on campus policy and group practices. The Fireside Chats are a discussion-based webinar series that aim to bring a globally diverse group of experts to weigh in on an important current topic. It is designed to be cozy, relaxed, engaging, and at the same time, serious, fun, prerogative, thought-provoking and blue sky. Mrs. Mimi Ely, partner of Education Insight from the UK is our moderator and we have four very distinguished speakers. They are Ms. Karen Fisher from the Chronicle of Higher Education in the USA, Professor Polly Strahan from the Singapore Management University, Ms. Louise Robert from the University of the West of England, and Mr. Erin Duck, a senior marketing and communications consultant based in Australia. Just like SCB, Fireside Chat is also once a month, but on every third Wednesday of the month at okay. 9 p.m. Singapore time. So be sure to mark the date and time in your diary for the next Fireside Chat, 19 August, 9 p.m. Singapore time. Registration is now open for session three, which is scheduled on the 19th of August. Please look out for our email list. This is a one-off event, um, specially requested by the higher education leaders of Pakistan. The theme is International Best Practices in Managing COVID-19 for the Higher Education Sector, and we will be organizing this event under the banner of Applied AG Exchange Pakistan. Exchange is another one of our brands for events. This webinar is targeted at higher education leaders and practitioners in Pakistan as the country prepares to reopen its higher education sector in a couple of weeks' time. Applied AG Exchange Pakistan will take place on the 10th of August at 2 p.m. Pakistan time 
and you're welcome to sign up even if you're not based in Pakistan. We're very grateful for our invited speakers, Professor Ponchai Wonkonbanit of Siam University, Thailand, Mr. Hang Truong from the University of Newcastle, Australia, Professor Min Yu Michelle Lee from Changzhou Christian University, Taiwan, and Mr. Chun Hyun Kim from Kyunghee University, South Korea. The event will be hosted by the University of Lahore, and the moderator is Professor Syed Amir Gilani, who is also the country director for Applied AP Pakistan. The first of its kind, I don't think there has ever been such a diversified event where we have three higher education consortia coming together from three different parts of the world, Asia, US, and Europe. Applied HE Exchange Higher Education Consortia is scheduled for the 9th of September. This event will focus on the role of higher education consortia during a pandemic. So if you're involved or interested in consortia, be sure to attend this very special edition. Our speakers are none other than the leaders of the respective consortia itself. We have Professor Ponchai Monkombanit, President of the Asia Cooperation Dialogue University Network Consortia, Professor Marek Kreklivsky, President of the Compostela Group of Universities, and Mr. Sean Manley Casimir, Executive Director of Conahack Consortium for North American Education Co Collaboration. Our guest speaker is Professor Moritz Van Rusen, with Professor Judith Lemmy, who will be our moderator, and I'm sure both need no further introduction after the very sterling performance in this debate. And we have one more special webinar before the year is up, and this is excluding all the SCDs and fireside chats. So if you want to learn more about the innovations taking place in skills-based education, join our inaugural Applied AG Exchange TVET on the 22nd and 23rd of September. This special two-part webinar will address the question of the digitization of skills-based education from a policy and practitioner perspective. Speakers who have already accepted our invitation include Dr. Janaka Jayala of the Tertiary and Vocational Education Commission, Sri Lanka, Professor Shayanal Mujunda of UNESCO Unibroch, Germany, Professor Rahal Abdurrahim of University Technical Malaysia, or U10, Dr. Conrad Inigo Jr. of Papakoa in the Philippines, and Ms. Grace Titi from the Renoji Institute of Advanced Technology, Kenya. The moderator will be a very charming Mrs. Mini Ely, who is also the moderator for our series of fireside chats, for those who don't know. But do not worry if you can't remember any of these dates, we will be sending you our weekly emailers, or you can visit our website, appliedhe.com. In the meantime, do check out our Applied HE Extra Extra News web website, where you can submit your institution's news and press releases weekly. A piece of good news to share if, if you have not heard about it, we are pleased to announce that Applied HE Extra Extra News is now indexed by Google News. This means our readership is growing rapidly and we can now truly promote you on the global stage and at no charge at all. This is great news for both readers and institutions which publish news via the Applied HE online news platform. So for readers, it will enable them to receive all the latest news from their favorite news sources in one place. And for institutions that submit news, your stories will reach a much wider audience. Google News is often used by professionals, researchers, and decision makers to monitor or find news about specific topics and institutions. Therefore, by submitting news stories to Applied HE Extra Extra, institutions are guaranteed to reach those targeted audience. So please send us your extraordinary news now. Also, take a look at our Applied HE Job Ready Rating. The new rating system emphasizes teaching and learning, graduate skills, employability, and interaction with industry. The rating is also non-prescriptive and can be applied to different types of institutions across different sectors from full-fledged research universities to specialized institutions. Please drop us a line if you would like to learn more about the job ready ratings and how it can translate into affordable strategies for global branding and marketing. You can also find some preliminary rating results on our website. And finally, we invite you to submit information about your institution's online degree programs 
as we plan to soon launch Applied AG Online Ready, an authoritative information portal about high quality online degrees around the world. This will enable you to promote your online degree courses in any language and on the global stage, again at no charge. So please send information of your online course degrees to Peter Slack at ps at appliedag.com. And last but not least, as you know, we are the new kid on the block and we're very grateful for all the support that we can get, which is why I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge once again, all our very supportive Red Banner partners, City University of Hong Kong, Education Insights UK, Universitas Erlanga of Indonesia, and Universitas Hasanuddin of Indonesia as well. A big thank you for the valuable support given to Applied AG. All right, thanks very much everyone. However, the evening is not over yet, so please do not leave the chat room. We want you to experience a networking atmosphere that is as creative and as close as we can get to a physical networking environment. We're going to open the room now so we can all take a wee together. You can also chat with one another with the chat function and pretend you're in the room together. Just use your imagination. So please be sure to turn on your cameras, play some music, have a drink, relax, and the room is all yours. Of course, you're free to leave whenever you want, but we hope you stay to meet with all your friends. So I will hand you over to Peter now, who will organize the wee over to you, Peter. All right, everybody. Um, let me first see if I can turn on the music. Um, yes, we are trying to do a kind of uh, virtual social networking. Um, and a fair number of you are here. That's great. I apologize. Some of you I haven't been able to upgrade as attendees. Um, but I think you can hear my computer now. That's great. Right. Um, problem here so yes please uh, take this time to switch on your your video um, okay. now I think I have yes we have a bit of background music fantastic okay wonderful um, I think we have many people here I think more than we've had before that's fantastic I, I'll try and upgrade the last few of you and uh, feel free to unmute I mean uh, this can be chatting now if you want to introduce yourself or uh, if this is your chance to make that one final comment that you didn't get to make uh, a little bit earlier. And of course, if you go into uh, what is a gallery view, you can see everybody. So I see Morris is still here. I see, I think, uh, Reverend Charles, you were in the chat as well. So it's nice to put a face to a chat. Oh, Jacqueline as well joining us, I think. Uh, Charles, this, this is Charles from Bishop State University here in Uganda. Fantastic. I'm actually very, very grateful for, uh, for this uh, uh, opportunity to have you discuss important issues that concern uh, uh, the, the, the members of the society in this era. It has been so very, very good and touching. And I, I pray that we continue to have such uh, discussions uh, because this will raise us to another level. Great. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for that comment. Good Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, anybody else want to say something or a final comment from the debaters? They didn't have oh, the you mind? Hi, where are you joining us from? Hello. <laughs> Anybody want to say something? Hello. Hello. I want to say something. Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. My name is Mitra. I'm also from Asia Pacific. Ah, very good. Yeah, being a teacher for more than two. I mean, for we this would time. like just to say hello to Mandy. Well, we wish you all the best because it's very, very good. And uh, we hope to meet you soon. You know, thank you, Peter, of course. You're doing a great job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much from Ahli University in Bahrain. Great, great. Anybody else want to introduce themselves quickly? Yeah. Um, yeah, I am uh, Dr. Viti Sridhar from India. I'm happy to invite uh, everyone uh, for an international virtual conference. Uh, so it is planned. Uh, 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 during 
October 2020. It's an international conference on current trends and future challenges in education. So there is a link where you can register and give your uh, details. So I'll be in touch with you and invite you as a panelist, invite you as a reviewer, and invite you as a researcher and uh, uh, no contributor for the research paper. I am extremely happy to be in this platform. Uh, my uh, no, uh, same way, I would request everyone to join me and support me in this international conference. For the okay, details, so I, I will I will forward it to you. Thank you so much. Thanks for the organizer. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Rin, did you want to say something? Yes, or... I. Um, I was I was actually hoping for a little bit of Q and A because I was very much interested in hearing uh, Professor Judith's uh, final conclusion with regards to the argument that eventually everything will be online. We didn't even get a chance to talk about more advanced technologies like AI and things of the sort that actually help with expert systems and substituting for people. And also we didn't talk about how culture can actually change because kids that go to school now also have parents that are mostly professional. And in this professional environment, the actual education doesn't need to happen in the traditional classroom, but rather it can be taken out into the real world in practice. So all of these were very interesting angles that I had wanted to hear different opinions on uh, during a Q&A. Uh, Judith, do you want to quickly comment? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you've hit the nail on the head there, Rin, to be honest, because also I, I think sometimes when people talk about face-to-face -face learning and teaching, they think it's in a classroom. Face-to-face -face learning and teaching doesn't have to be in a classroom. Of course it doesn't. The whole point, however, is there's a physical face-to-face -face interaction there, you know, and that is what I think can't and shouldn't change and, and, and probably won't for longer than we can imagine just because situations are different across the entire planet you know um and, and i think probably finally my my main point though is that people do learn differently and that's what struck me in talking to my students and still contacting my students during lockdown you know some of them loved the fact that everything was online they really embraced it others found it really really difficult and not because they're not bright and not because they're not motivated they just learn in a different way you know, so so I, I I do think it will never be replaced just because there's there's a space for all of the things, all of the different things that, that we've got. You know, it doesn't mean you can't learn, but it just means that it's going to become different. You know, exactly. It will merge into something different from either or. And yeah, so yeah. Probably. Thank you. Okay, great. Anybody okay. else want to say hi? Yeah, I, 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 if I can quickly react All to right. that, uh, Judith, oh, okay. because I mean, sorry to do, I don't want to do to start restart the debate. Here, <laughs> yeah, but, we can go uh, for another hour. Right? But, <laughs> well, <laughs> but the, 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 the point Judith made is, is of course, um, uh, actually, ultimately, it would have been a very boring debate that Judith and I just said we agreed with each other. So uh, obviously, we put everything black and white. But it, I think Judith and I actually think very much the same about this. And that it is about individualizing uh, learning. Uh, and yes, probably in the future, digital tools, online tools, also experiential learning you refer to, Rin, are absolutely spot on. All this is having a role. The fact that we should spend less time listening to a professor, spend less time sitting in labs, but do a bit more in augmented reality. In, in, in virtual reality, etc., will increase the quality of the learning experience. And obviously, this is not going to happen tomorrow because there's still a lot of technical obstacles and, and it's, it's still a lot of the di digital tools are quite primitive still, to be honest. MOOCs, I think, is quite a primitive form of, of conveying uh, knowledge, in my opinion. But we're moving in that direction. And um, I cannot say whether this is going to be in 10 years time or in 50 years time, but we are moving in that direction. But ultimately, I think Judith and I sadly completely agree with each other. Yeah, but yeah, we couldn't yeah. say that we tried at the not beginning to because it would have been very, very we boring. We desperately right? tried not to. <laughs> yeah. Rin, Rin, where are you joining us from? Just curious. I'm, I'm also from Asia Pacific University, same ah. as Dinesh, so I'm in Malaysia. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. great. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, anybody else want to say hi? Can, can we combine both face to face teaching and uh, online teaching? Because this oh, yes. gave us a chance to combine both in the future. 
so it is a big challenge right initially we may start combining both face to face and uh, online teaching so any comments from experts I, I Absolutely, and this is what I, I argued in my recent article, Integrated Virtual Learning, whereby we're actually talking much more about, stop talking about the binary divide of online and face-to-face, mm -hmm. -face, but actually bring it together. And I think that's going to be the mainstream teaching uh, in integrated virtual learning with supplementary classroom-based personal interaction and supplementary fully online. But the mainstream is going to be exactly what you just suggested that we are bringing it all together and uh, thinking in boxes about this is online this is face-to-face -face, this is uh, hybrid this is blended etc i think is, is a bit of an old well to be honest a bit of a 20th century way of thinking i think in the 21st century we will have to see a much more fluid education uh, and, and much more individualized i think judith made that point very well we should be focusing more on the individual students rather than on the students. And actually our aim should be giving more choice and, and enrich education rather than prescribe it as this is how it has to be. And Prof Binesh, you want to say something as well or did I get that wrong? Uh, yeah, I want to say that, uh, you know, it's already happening now, uh, post-pandemic. Not all students are going to campus, you know, a blend of uh, people on campus and another, another group who are with them. So that, that is happening right now. But having said that, I think technology is not as simple as it sounds. It will take a lot of effort adopting technology because it will always evolve. So the learning process for any educator is usually there. So the new wave is actually a more harder wave because it's going to take more efforts. And the best part is so rapid. Whether we as educators can keep on par with the uh, and I think educators have got a large uh, age gap between young educators to senior educators. And I think the, uh, the adoption uh, uh, is going gonna, gonna to vary between them. Yeah? Oh, Prof. Mansur, you raised your hand. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. And then I, I think the debater should stop talking. You've had yeah. enough time. I think uh, just, <laughs> just to put, the, I think there is a little misconception. Online teaching doesn't mean all of a sudden we'll have this robot which is going to do the teaching. It will be a gradual uh, move towards online, more sophisticated tools. But the, the, the professor will be still human. The curriculum will be developed by humans. Everything will be done by humans. It will just be flexibility and sophistication where we deliver and people will benefit more. That's, I don't want to open, reopen the debate. We won anyway because we converted more people, but nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm entirely sure. We lost. We lost. I was warned. You just that lost if I by less. We would lose. <laughs> um, some of the other uh, people joining us for a very quick introduction. I see uh, DN. You will be joining us in a future debate. Is that correct, or are you a different DN? I, I, I think every challenge comes oh. with a positive message. Oh. This challenge gave us a chance. So many experts are sitting together. Otherwise, it was not possible. I think yes. so. Yeah. So this challenge gave us some good positive messages, which is we are at present seeing so many experts sitting together. Thank you. Thank you for those uh, comments. Uh, I also see Nikita. Avrales, um, I think you're an old friend of Mandy's. Um, good to say hi. Hi, I'm very glad to see you uh, in, in this time, not very uh, good time for the world um, uh, and uh, for Russia. So I'm um, very pleasure to introduce you from Russia, from uh, south of Russia. Um, uh, North Caucasus uh, Federal University. Um, very good thanks, very best thanks uh, and the, uh, for Mandy and uh, your colleague uh, for this debate. Uh, so we have uh, one time a month, very good debates, very good speakers. Uh, so Mandy. <laughs> Thank you. 
our heart for you and uh, heart from Russian universities. So thank you very much. And Russia would love for you. Yes. <laughs> this, is, this is the Mendy fan club, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this might be key, you know? There's a big Moritz fan club as well, by the way. I saw some people. Yeah, everybody's got a big fan club here now. Yeah. Everybody's fan club is here. And the APU fan club, very good. <laughs> oh, All great. right. Um, anybody else? Say hi. Yes, Petra, go ahead. I just want to make one point. Uh, to me, parents can educate their children online. Then the teachers also can educate students. Mitra, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, a little bit better. Just, just speak loudly. I think it'll work. Okay, I try to be loud. It's like classroom. I'm saying that if parents, let's say, can educate the children fully online, then I believe teachers can educate the students fully online. So it's not just completing the modules and taking the marks module and passing all the programs. It's the education, the, the element of the interaction face to face with the community. I Okay, thank you for that comment. Um, I think we should uh, slowly start wrapping up because uh, uh, probably some of you have somewhere to go as well, uh, be it bed or another meeting. And um, does anybody want to make any last comments before uh, we, we close it off? I just want to say thank you for the presentation and I look forward to having more in-depth debates and I wish there was more time for the speakers to actually elaborate on all their points. Don't worry, we'll do one. <laughs> we'll do one again soon and we'll invite back to see you. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining. And have a very good night, morning, afternoon. Okay. Uh, bye -bye. Yeah. Really Thank you. And uh, bye -bye. see you next Thank time. You. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Okay.